Hi guys, welcome to my channel Absolute Biopharma. I am your host Pallavi. If you are new to this channel, then let me tell you what you can expect on this channel. Here you can find the content related to the biopharma industry, its working principles, technical knowledge needed to enter this industry. Moreover, on this channel, you will get an idea of companies working in this sector, questions that are generally asked in various interviews, exams that are conducted by various government bodies and universities to enter this industry. If you want to know the key players of this industry globally, then do watch the video till the end. In this video, I am going to provide a general idea about biopharmaceuticals. So, let's get started. To understand biopharmaceuticals, let's first differentiate between a pharma drug and a biopharma or a biologic drug. A pharmaceutical drug is a chemically synthesized drug, whereas a biological drug is a drug derived from a biological source and is mainly composed of sugar, proteins, nucleic acids and maybe of living entities as cells and tissues. If we see a pharmaceutical drug, it is manufactured through chemical synthesis and is, the order is predefined and the order is processed. A pharmaceutical drug is manufactured through synthesis of chemicals and is predefined and orderly processed and if we see a biologic drug, it is usually manufactured in a living system such as cell, microorganism or a living system. A pharma drug can be administered orally, parenteral, interdermal, subcutaneous, intramuscular and inhalation whereas biologic drug is administered through subcutaneous, intramuscular or intravenously. Now let us understand the terms oral, parenteral that will include subcutaneous, intramuscular, intravenous, then epidural, then inhalation. First comes the oral. These include tablets, capsules, powders, emulsions and gels. Most of these are absorbed from the small intestine and some are absorbed from the stomach and colon. The drugs administered from this route have slow action but more prolonged. These drugs are the safest, economical and the convenient way. Now comes the parenteral. Any route other than the GI tract will be considered as the parenteral route. These routes are chosen when the drug is poorly absorbed from the gut. These are always administered by the syringe. In this first is the subcutaneous in which the drug is injected into the loose subcutaneous tissue under the skin. The drug that is injected is in very small amount that is less than 2 ml. Drugs that are administered from this route have slow action but are prolonged. Second comes the intramuscular. In this, the drug is administered with a heavy and long needle that penetrates the subcutaneous tissue. The drug is deposited deep between the layers of the muscle mass. Then comes the intravenous. In intravenous, the drug is injected when the immediate effect is required or when the drug cannot be injected into the other tissues or when the absorption is inhibited by poor circulation. It is of great value in case of emergency. Here, the drug reaches directly into the bloodstream. In intradermal injection, the drugs are injected into the outer layer of the skin the amount of drug injected is very small and absorbed slowly. In epidural, the drug is injected and deposited through the vertebral interspace between dura of spinal cord and lining of spinal cord. This is administered in case of sudden cardiac arrest. Now comes the inhalation. In this, the drugs are administered through nasal passage. These are of two classes, volatile and non-volatile. Volatile will include oxygens and CO2s that are anesthetics, then non-volatile will include inhalers, nebulizers that will be aerosols. If you see in the picture the various routes of administration in the intramuscular way of injecting a drug, the angle of the syringe is at 90 degree. Then if this is subcutaneous, the angle is 45, intravenous 25 degree and in intradermal the syringe is used to inject the drug in the epidermis of the skin that is 10 to 15 degree of the angle. So these are some of the very basic differences between a pharma and a biologic drug. 
as this video is on biopharmaceuticals i'm not going to touch much on the pharma part now let's see some of the examples of the biologic drugs basically there are three categories if we see therapeutic proteins vaccines and enzymes substances that are nearly identical to the body's own key signaling protein like erythropoietin growth hormone then monoclonal antibodies fusion proteins blood growth factors blood factors interleukins interferons these all come under therapeutic proteins then another two categories are vaccines and therapeutic enzymes so these are the type of biologic drugs that various biopharma companies work on and they do manufacturing in my upcoming videos i am going to explain each type of drug separately finally let's conclude why a biopharma drug because they are highly sensitive and potent therapeutic with efficiency coupled with limited side effects then they exhibit more predictable behavior under in vivo conditions proteins therapeutic offer a highly specific and rather complex set of functions they have limited interference with the normal biological process low immunogenicity potential to replace gene therapy if we see from the industrial point of view they have faster clinical development have approved time as well as better patent protection as i said at the end i will share with you the key players in the biopharma industry around the globe in 2020 so here they are first is the johnson and johnson america roche switzerland pfizer america novartis switzerland merck and corporation america abbott laboratories america Abbe America, Novo Nordisk Denmark, Eli Lilly and Cooperation America, Bristol Myers and Squibb America. The location here that I mentioned are the headquarters. In the description box I have shared the links and the references from where I have referred the content. If you want to know more in detail you can click the below given links. If you like the video then hit the bell icon so then whatever I will upload the video you will get notified and do subscribe to my channel. If you have any topic in your mind and want me to make a video on that please do write in the comment section. Thank you and have a great day.